got my Hantec uh, 1008 here, guys, out um, for the simple reason. Somebody asked me a question, and uh, I didn't know the answer to it, so I decided to look it up. Uh, he was asking me about the um, digital square wave generator uh, facility on the Hantec. Um, that is to say, uh, at the back side of the rig here, uh, there is a rectangular connector with multiple pins on it, and you can have up to eight outputs of square wave um, uh, signal. You can adjust the, uh, the frequency. Um, it's a little bit convoluted to adjust the frequency, especially if you have a software version. Uh, software version that I have here, guys, is 1.0.30, which is essentially the automotive software. Um, it's quite convoluted, but I'll briefly show you what's involved with that. But again, back to the connector. Um, there is eight outputs uh, for a square wave signal generator. You can adjust the frequency. The pinout is uh, mentioned here. And it, the manual says it's VL, uh, TTL uh, logic levels. So the voltage, uh, VL, TTL to me means a maximum of like 3.3 volts. And yet the output is, uh, you can see there, I've got an output currently, I'm just using the single channel here, um, D0 through 7. Uh, pins are uh, the outputs. Um, there's multiple grounds, so this is on D0, which is uh, channel 1, and I've got a ground here, as you can imagine, and I've got it going to the oscilloscope, which is uh, the yellow trace here is, in fact, channel 1. I've got a couple of measurements up here just for the sake of uh, being able to uh, track what's going on, the minimum and maximum voltage, and I actually have the frequency set of 1 hertz here for a reason, in order to show you the mathematics involved in order to adjust the frequency to get a frequency output they actually are interested in okay so I've got a window within a window here here is the actual generator itself so I've actually only got three outputs you can select three five or eight is the defaults uh, is busy with that many channels so I just want to show you the three here uh, where this gets confusing is because again it's the automotive software the x-axis on the signal generator here is not time domain it's actually in degrees can you see here I've got two cursors L1 and L2 and you can see the split between L1 and L2 is 360 degrees so what I have here is actually 720 degrees of let's call it rotation actually displayed here if you look at this uh, analogous to a crank um, on your car 720 degrees of rotation would be a full cycle in a four-stroke engine if you keep that in mind, it makes the mathematics a bit easier to understand here. You can see here that what I have, it looks like I've only got two pulses. But with respect to the parameter set up here, I've actually got four, because they're including the positive and the negative. So that's one, two, three, four. And because it's 720 degrees, the way the math is going to work out on our setup here, guys, is this is actually two full seconds of time. And I'll backtrack and show you what's involved with that in just a second. So if you go to File, click File, click Edit, click Set Parameters, you'll get this window that will pop up. So you can see, again, I've got three waveforms actually shown, again, in the interest of simplicity. I've got four pulses, as I explained. It might look like two, but as far as the parameter setup is concerned, is four. And this gives you the option to... Uh, um, start with a high or a low pulse on whatever respective channel that you select from the drop down here okay so let's go okay and here's where it gets weird operate you can select the output that just gives you the, the option to set it on or off so I've got it on that's why it's displayed on the scope set speed not frequency but speed so there's a little bit of convoluted mathematics involved here guys right I have the output speed set here for unrealistically low uh, crank rotational speed, obviously, but it's done for a reason. It's so that we have one cycle per second on the frequency there, so you can understand the math that's involved. So, again, I said on uh, the window here, it translated to, on the signal generator, it translated to two full seconds right so 720 degrees of rotation so can you dig that that would be one cycle per second right 60 uh, over 60 seconds there's 60 seconds in a minute of course 
that's how we end up with one heart one cycle per second and you can adjust those numbers if it went to 700 or 120 uh, rpm as opposed to 60 this would go to two hertz if you doubled it that would double so you need to work the mathematics in order to get your output frequency cumbersome yes but again it's because of the version of the software that they've uh, chose not to show it in uh, a time domain but in a degrees with respect to the horizontal axis a bit convoluted but uh, I guess the, that was the engineers rationale behind it <clears throat> so um, sorry, let me get rid of this so again here's the uh, here's the uh, the output actually just shown here guys again I've got it set up in those parameters and uh, there's the output that you can see so uh, you can have up to eight channels actually displayed um, they're all going to utilize the same uh, frequency. You can select uh, the positive or negative for the start of the waveform, so you can have them in or out of phase type thing. I know it's not AC, but you know what I mean uh, with respect to the pulses. And um, yeah, so I can see this being useful for, with that level of output, you could certainly trigger an ignition uh, coil, uh, a coil on plug. You could trigger the ignition with that pulse, uh, possibly simulate a wheel speed sensor, maybe drive a tachometer. There's probably a number of things you could do with this simulated output. Again, you'd obviously have to manipulate the numbers to get a reasonable frequency, but uh, certainly possible. If you didn't understand the math, watch the video again, guys. We bit convoluted, understand the number of pulses. Um, yeah, there was two cycles up there, but four pulses with respect to positive and negative with respect to the parameter setup and the RPM. Keep in mind, there's obviously 60 seconds in a minute Keep in mind you're not dealing with a second, but a full minute. So 60 is going to be uh, the number you'll have to keep in mind. Right. I hope that all makes sense, guys. Uh, sorry about the convoluted mathematics. It took me a while to figure out what the hell was going on there with respect to the setup. Because it doesn't outline it in the manual. It doesn't explain that. Um, but again, uh, I suspect if you have the earlier versions of the software, which is the non-automotive, perhaps it's a little simpler in setup. Why would they refer to the RPM in the non-automotive uh, setup? I don't think they would. Okay, that's it, boys. I'll leave it at that. I hope that helps. Uh, again, a fella asked, how do you use this? Um, I'm hoping I can find this connector uh, somewhere on the internet, you know, that I can just set up here. and Maybe there's a ribbon harness of some sort that would come off it that I could uh, set up a wee bit easier than, you know, individually pinning it out. This is a bit clumsy, obviously, but... Uh, I'll have to do for now. I hope that makes sense. Again, the 1008, still a great layout, I think. Dog's slow, but usually fine for automotive purposes. That's it, boys. Cheers.